Hey, good afternoon, good afternoon. You see the picture, it says black sheep or persecuted. Was Jesus or St. Paul a black sheep or were they persecuted? That's an interesting subject if you think about it. I've only seen one black sheep in my life at the county fair. But uh, black sheep are real. All the millions and millions of real sheep are white. But there are black sheep. Very few, one in a million, you know. Now, was Jesus or St. Paul persecuted? Or were they being treated badly by God? Were they being treated badly by God? That is the issue. You know, most uh, Christians begin to think that they are being treated badly by God. Well, let me give you something about that, about this black sheep. In the Old Testament, they had to work the law. And because they worked so hard, God's blessings was peace and prosperity and friends. But in the New Testament, malicious treatment is gone. And uh, the angels said to them, shepherds, goodwill to its man, peace on earth. Now you've got goodwill, not malice anymore, which is ill will, bad will, but you've got goodwill. And now God is treating you with grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And now you don't have to work the law to be a Christian, to be saved. Now you get it for free, freely you receive freely give now the idea here is the blessings change from the Old Testament to the New Testament you're not working now you're gonna have trouble persecution all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and so you need to know that you're not God's black sheep that you're just being treated badly by the devil it's not God treating you badly the blessing changes in the New Testament, God's blessings is evident by your amount of persecution. God's blessings are evident by your amount of sickness and ill health and trouble and poverty. That's God's blessings because the devil is fighting you. Old Testament, friends, prosperity, uh, peace, New Testament blessing, struggles. You know God is using you. But some Christians would say, Oh, Brother Jim, Jesus and St. Paul both died alone. They died without friends. They died without helpers. They died without money. They must have been God's black sheep. No. You should be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus was God the Son, sinless, not even one sin. There's no recorded sins against St. Paul. So they weren't God's black sheep, and you're not God's black sheep. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible says, If the salt loses its savor, it's no good but to be trodden underfoot of men. 1 Timothy 3, 7, uh, it talks about have a good rapport, else you end up in a snare and reproach from Satan. And a snare is like when you catch a bird, it's like a slip knot, right? The bird puts his foot in there and yeah. And the harder the bird pulls, the worse it is for his foot. He cannot uh, get his foot out. And so you can get in Satan's snare. You think Satan was uh, had Jesus in his snare? Do you? You think Paul was in Satan's snare? Um, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he says, I keep my body under, lest being a castaway after I've preached to others. Mark 8, 36, he that saveth his life shall lose it. And uh, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? The next one in Jeremiah talks about being reprobate silver, you know, silver is a type of redemption. How about uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5? Examine yourself, see if you're in the faith, else you'd be reprobate. Hebrews 13, 13, uh, 3, 13. Uh, Exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Uh, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. 
Obadiah 1.3 talks about the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. And so I want to ask you a question. Was Jesus deceived? Was he being trodden underfoot or in a snare from Satan? Or was Jesus to cast away? Did, did Paul lose his own soul or become a reprobate, silver, or hardened heart? Uh, like Lot's wife, you know, he turned back. And uh, that's the tragedy of most Christians today who never went to the mission field. They, uh, they could have God's blessings. Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. But instead of being blessed, they're going to have to be blasted out of their easy chair from their remote and their sandwiches and their Pepsi Colas. And they're going to have to be blasted out there to give the gospel that they know they're supposed to be giving. The, have the pride of thine heart deceived Paul and Jesus? No. In Luke 21, verses 17 and on, And you shall be hated of all men. Why? For my name's sake. Not because of you. There's a story of Noah back there. And I believe he built the ark probably big enough for all the people that were alive. You think about it. But did those people get on that ark? No. And so they weren't moving in the direction of the ark. So God says, okay, animals. And mysteriously, they came out of the woods onto the ark. Isn't that an interesting story? You know, Noah, you're a jerk. And uh, if you're a Christian Noah, we're not going to your ark church, your boat church. We're not going. If you're a Christian, well, I want to ask you something. Wouldn't it have been better to have an ark and then to drown? Ark is better than drowning. Ark is better than drowning. Jesus is better than burning. You say, but I don't want to be. Okay, I know you don't want to be. But let me ask you a question. You get on the boat with Noah. I don't care if Noah's a jerk. God chose the foolish, the things that are hated, the things that are despised, the things that are nothing, the things that are base. God chose those kind of preachers. Why? To confound the mighty. And you should be hated of all men for my name's sake. Not because of you. Don't take it personally. He's the one that sent you. He said, go ye. He's the one that sent you, and you're the one with his message. You should be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Now, there's these popularity hounds these days. They'll be in hell forever. They're faring sumptuously every day. Now, they want to be popular because of money. Oh, yeah, look at me. I'm a... I'm a superstar Christian. Oh yeah, that other guy's not a superstar Christian. He's a dirt bag. You know, they're, they're running around split, spreading malice, bloodthirstiness, and hatred for other Christians. But they want this popularity stuff. They're popularity hounds. They're going to be in hell forever because a real Christian, it says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay, look at my verse in the bottom here. My verse in the bottom. And I'm finished. Bye. Acts 11. First at Antioch. Christian was a derogatory term. You're a Christian. Yeah. In 2 Timothy 3, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now you've got to be thinking about this, guys. Hebrews 12, 6 on, he says, uh, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Lord, what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are B-A-S-D-A-R-Ds and not sons. Now you see, God doesn't have any black sheep. You're saved, you are saved. But Satan will persecute you like he persecuted Jesus and persecuted St. Paul. And Satan will persecute you, but God's blessings are upon you. But if you don't go, you're gonna endure chastening. You're not gonna be God's black sheep. Amen? Amen. Here's my email address if you need me. You need to think about these things because the persecution is coming. Stir you up. Thank you.